All right, so uh, welcome to this month's uh, Microsoft 365 uh, for Government here in the Washington DC user group. And this month we have Ali Thompson, who's coming to us from Microsoft, and she runs the Humans of IT community uh, within the tech community. If you haven't, uh, if you don't participate in the tech community, uh, techcommunity.microsoft.com, you definitely need to check it out. And even better, check out the Humans of IT segment of that community. And so, Ali, we welcome you here today. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Jeremy. Um, yeah, this is so much fun to be here. So thank you all. And uh, thanks to those of you who showed up. <laughs> um, so yeah, so um, Jeremy did a great intro, but this is me, um, Allie Thompson. Um, I'm a product marketing manager at Microsoft on the modern work side. I lead the humans of IT community and I also do a lot of work with our MVPs who are focused um, on, my, on Microsoft 365. Um, and, and yeah, and my info is up there. I'm also on LinkedIn, so feel free to, to connect now and later. Um, I'm always happy to, to connect with, with anyone in the community, so please don't hesitate. And yeah, so I'll give kind of like the the overview of of humans of IT. Um, and so this is our charter, right? This is a program that is is about what it sounds like. It's about the humans in the IT community, um, the human side of technology, how people use tech for good, how people empower each other. Um, it's you know it's people telling their non-traditional career journeys. It's people talking about professional development skills um, and then showcasing their, their own personal tech impact stories. Um, and some of the highlights on there are just some recent stats. So our community on tech community is over 13,000 people on there right now. So it's really, it's, it's, there's really engaging discussions and a really awesome blog. We publish about two blogs a week. Um, and they range from, you know, I think some of our recent ones included um, Lisa Crosby, who is an MVP in business applications who went from the publishing industry um, to tech and her story is really awesome. I think that's the latest one. And we have somebody who like worked at McDonald's and now works at Microsoft. Um, so lots of really cool stories on there. Um, I'm sure you can find some, some, some stuff about Jeremy and his daughter on there too. Um, and, and yeah, so this is, this is what humans at IT is about. Um, and this just kind of breaks it down a little more, the types of topics that we cover. Um, our audience is, is really broad. Um, so even though on the, on the marketing side, I'm really focused on the IT audience, um, we've really extended this because all humans count, right? So developers and citizen developers, everybody is everybody is invited um, to tell their stories on here. We we try to, to keep this really broad and not super focused on um, on Microsoft 365 or Office. Um, and our main channels are the tech community, so the blog and and the discussion space on there, um, and then Microsoft's flagship events. So key moments, you'll always see humans of IT sessions at Ignite. We have five sessions coming up at Build. Um, we had one at, at MBAS a, a couple of weeks ago. And then, um, yeah, so you can look for about two new new blogs every week, too. Um, and so here's a little bit of the history. Um, it it's So some of you might know the name Shauna Bang. I don't know if she's ever been to this user group, but um, Shauna started Humans of IT, and she was really hired onto our team to start a women in tech community. Um, and she was kind of the one who was like, well, it's not just about women, like it should be more than that. And so she launched diversity and tech um, in January of 2018. And so that was really focused on just like all kinds of diversity in technology. And um, we changed the name and launched Humans of IT in September of 2019 to make it even broader. So it's not just about women. It's not just about diversity. We wanted to kind of account for things like neurodiversity and, and mental health and just non-traditional career journeys and just everything that makes each person's story unique. Um, and so that's kind of where we've been. And mostly the it's been a presence at events and the blog on tech community. But um, there have been some other new initiatives that that Shauna launched last year. And, and I've really only been working on on this this work since 
really leading up to Ignite in March. So that was kind of the first time I was really working on, on um, the humans of IT stuff. But we kind of have blue sky now in terms of like directions that we want to go, partnerships that that we want to start and and how how we're going to kind of grow our community and find new ways to engage. So really happy to be here and just find new faces, new stories to tell. Um, and, you know, hopefully you'll all be interested in sharing and, and we'll be able to to grow to grow this. Um, I think this this breaks down the channels a little bit more, but like I said, tech community and flagship events have been really the focus. Um, we also have the community mentors application, which I think we have a QR code in here somewhere that you could scan if you're interested in mentoring. Um, and they actually just recently launched an app for teams so you can do it right in in your your hub for for work. Um, and there was a LinkedIn learning series that launched this January that I know took some time last year to um, to build out. Um, people like Duck Raymond Sai have have some um, learning paths on there as well, and that's something that we hope to continue. Um, and then we also do calls with the MVP and RD community, calls with Microsoft Reactor, um, and the the virtual hub which which came out with Ignite last year, which is just a, a place where you can kind of see a lot of um, a lot of the videos, a lot of the, the more technical depth that didn't make it <laughs> to to the main stage at Ignite. Um, and we got some humans of IT videos in there as well. Um, so those are really the basics. Um, we have a little spotlight on Jeremy um, and Jeremy and, and his daughter and his daughter have been really involved with humans of IT since the beginning. And so I wanted to kind of give him a chance to talk about his experience and the stories that he's shared and their build session last year was so much fun. Um, so Jeremy, I don't know if you want to just chime in. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I uh, so thank you for that. Yeah, <laughs> and you did warn me and I completely forgot. So um, yeah, so. It's really interesting uh, for, for me. I mean, I've been participating since it was diversity in tech back when Shona first launched it and, and when they rebranded it, uh, Humans of IT. Um, but also my, my daughter, who um, is a high school senior this year and is going to graduate this year, I got her involved in the community um, a couple of years ago. And in fact, went went so far as to, you know, I love Ignite the Tour because it's in the local area. And so, you know, instead of having to spend a lot of money to bring my daughter to Ignite in Orlando, I could just say, hey, look, it's here in D.C. Let's let's go down to the convention center. And she got to attend. They had a really nice Humans of IT track. And so, of course, she was also she's interested in IT. So there's a couple other things she wanted to hit. Um, and she got to meet um, Roxy. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to try to pronounce her last name. I have to usually practice it before I say her last name. But she's here. In, she actually lives here in the D.C. area. Um, it's become a good friend. And and Roxy gave a presentation on um, just different anxieties and, and challenges you have in the work environment. And my daughter just latched onto that, volunteered to stand up and talk about some of her challenges during that session, which was just amazing. And uh, you know, makes a makes a heart a, a father's heart grow very large. And then she also got to hear Ducks speak at that same conference. And from that, Ducks was like, hey, why are you guys just coming and talking to me about it? You guys should be talking about yourself. And so out of that, um, started a process where we wrote our own session on mentoring future technologists that we presented at Ignite the following year. And then also a couple times since then, we've done it for the Chicago user group and for uh, Microsoft Build. We were on a panel with uh, David and Sarah, who were also, we met at that um, when we did our session here in DC. So. You know, there's a lot to this community. Um, Ducks is a rock star, and his his you know uh, uh, sessions are amazing on getting getting started in being you know per your personal brand and and how to uh, reach out and do tech for good. Uh, and there's a number of people within the community who have had an impact both on myself and my daughter. And so uh, we try to find ways to give back, and that's why I invited Ali to this this session this month is because this this community is is quite amazing and. The, I'm looking for the link for the mentoring thing, uh, Ali. I'll post it if you don't have the QR code later in the deck. But um, there's also this whole capability to to do mentoring, which uh, I'm getting my daughter to sign up for since she, she I mentor her. But it'd be good to have and, and you know get more mentors in her life, right? That are uh, able to push her forward. So thank you, thank you for uh, highlighting me. Of Ali. course. Yeah, and then we didn't know if like if Ducks would be here, but we wanted to highlight him too. He's really just. Um, 
like Jeremy, been a part of this since the beginning. And I think that you all just kind of exemplify what we're talking about, right? Like having a having a kid come up and talk about her anxiety. I mean, it's just it's amazing, right? And um, and I think we kind of talked about imposter syndrome a little bit at the beginning of this. And I just think it's so rampant in IT, especially for women, especially for people who come from non-traditional backgrounds and the tech industry can be very intimidating. And so I think this really just creates a space, um, you know, people like Ducks and like Donna Sarkar are always assigning people homework. Like, okay, you go out and give a session on this a year from now. Like you have to um, take what, what you're learning from whatever Humans of IT session or other session to think about what you can do, what your impact can be and how, and how you can build your brand up. And so I think, um, having all of you as anchors of this community and and sponsors of it has has just been huge for us um because it's not just about you jeremy doesn't come in to talk about how amazing he is he comes in and talks about you know the impact other people have had on him and he wants to mentor other people to um to be able to do what he's doing and and kind of spread spread the love so so thank you <laughs> um yeah and so i think with that, like the, we have a lot of kind of calls to action, right? There's a lot of options here. Um, we're always looking for new guest bloggers. And if you fill out the form to be a guest blogger, a lot of times we'll end up hitting you up to be a speaker later on. Um, and so I think, and there's even an option on there if you're interested in, in presenting, but we don't want to put pressure. I know some people just like to write and that's fine too. Um, but we'd love to hear from everyone. Um, this is really, it, it can be just a place to amplify your story or tell a story you haven't told before. Um, or it can really be like a jumping off point for people. And so I know we we have a lot of people who have written blogs or spoken for us at, at events who are now MVPs or working at Microsoft because it was just a way to get their name out there. Um, and so I think it's a really it's a really good jumping off point, and we're really open. We we want to share everyone's story, so you don't get rejected from this. Um, so if you have ideas of something that you might want to blog about or speak about at a future event, please submit your topic. Um, and if you want to read other stories that are on there, like I said, we publish about two a week, so there, there's like 170 something blogs on there um, currently, including recaps from events, which will link you to videos if you missed any sessions or if anything piques your interest. Um, they're pretty timeless um, given the given the topic areas, and so it's not a lot of like, oh, this brand new feature from three years ago at Microsoft. Um, it's really, it's stuff that's always relevant. So highly recommend you kind of click through those, watch any sessions that you're interested in, read the blogs, get inspired, um, and then share with us. Um, so these are all of our AKA links here. <laughs> um, let me double check that. I hope the QR code, the slide is gone, <laughs> um, but the AKA links are there. So yeah, so if you wanna be a guest blogger or a speaker, it's the same form um, and just keep an eye out for communities, community calls for content. I, I often share the form, um, you know, a few months before an event, if we're still looking for speakers. Um, and, um, and, and other than that, it's really, it's just that then there's downloading the community mentors app. Um, and that is basically all I have. So really happy to kind of take questions, hear your stories, um, and see how else I can help. Well, thank you, Ali. Anybody want to share their specific story or journey in terms of uh, something unique within the IT space? <laughs> all these scared uh, uh, DOD workers, which I understand <laughs> well, completely. Yeah. No, um, one of the uh, things that makes this session very timely for us is DOD for quite a long time has operated under an exemption to Article 508, which is no longer in effect. And all of these systems have grown and calcified in this well, I'll just throw colors on there. Well, I'll just throw, you know, who cares what it does on a screen reader because 
who's using a screen reader? Meanwhile, I take the metro, take the subway and to the building. And there's usually a couple of blind uh, people who take the subway and the shuttle bus to the building where I assume they go in and work on a screen reader. Like, how are you being taken care of? Like, is your how's your accessibility? I think so these are concerns that um, we're encountering currently that everybody else went through like 20 years ago. Yeah. Um, so this is great. Um, all these resources are going to help us find our way into a more diverse and inclusive, accessible systems that come out. Mm -hmm. So, um, so this is a good topic for for us. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate that. I mean, I think we have um, we have a lot of our stories, particularly from Ignite this year. You know, we had two speakers talking about their neurodiversity and kind of like their productivity hacks. Um, and then another speaker who built like a mental health check-in app and power-ups. Um, and so there's like a lot of things like that accessibility. We love the accessibility stories and, um, and, and Donna Sarkar, who I mentioned before, she's great at amplifying those too. Follow her on Twitter if you don't already. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I say there's, there, there's also the mentorship piece is huge for the community. Yeah. I mean, it's not as much talked about, I, I think, um, at like, maybe the events, because right, the event speakers are speaking to a specific topic or the, their their own personal story. But the the community mentors program is pretty amazing, and where you can go look for a mentor, and you're never too old to have a mentor, or look for some people that you're, you're, you you want to put yourself out there and say, hey, I'm open to to mentor some others, right? I'm looking for mentees to to come, and I have some extra time, and I want to help somebody in their uh, in their career or help somebody who's just got questions about about whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's a great program. Yeah. Yeah, these these communities that have grown up out of the, you know, the Microsoft SharePoint communities got started years ago, you know, decade ago, but um <laughs> and they have flowered really to 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 the extent of, you know, there's the humans of IT, there's the mentorship programs, there's the power platform people, you know, power addicts and all the rest. Mm -hmm. And it's international and it's great to see how this community had these communities have grown up encouraged by microsoft i gotta say <laughs> <laughs> as your as your frontline marketing team <laughs> but, that's, you know, but that's great and and to see some of the um you know applications that have been coming out especially on the humans of it side that just make it better for everybody uh, we were talking before the call about the uh, training and teaching and how it applies there i remember from my education adult education classes where it was like where they talked about universal design in architecture and then when they applied that idea you know the universal design in architecture is wheelchair ramps and ramps in general and how it made everything easier for everyone and all of a sudden everything's better for everyone and then they applied that to education and how just using different colors, using, you know, that idea of um, uh, the neural load on your brain, you know, with together mode and all the rest of that, and how that has, a pl when you apply that universal design to IT, how it just makes it better for everybody. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's something. <laughs> Yeah, I, re I had some classes on that universal design for learning. And yeah, that was the history of it. It's all taken from architecture. Um, yeah, it's been, it's it's very it's very interesting and and I think it's been a really cool time to work at Microsoft like in our in our org in particular I'm at, in like modern work marketing. There's a lot of really interesting thought leadership happening, right? A lot of like where together mode came from was just really hard research into like what are people um how are people managing like this year has been really hard you know even cvps were like i can't do this like this is rough <laughs> and i think just having our leaders um really dive into that and i mean you know like every other job i think they are really good at pushing work-life balance it, most of us don't take advantage of it and still like work ourselves crazy 
but um, I've seen a lot more of like our senior leaders being like, I am taking a week off to recharge. Like you should too. Um, and I mean, I've always had an awesome manager in that sense, but to see like execs really taking it seriously and, and understanding kind of the load that, that we've all been bearing <laughs> in the last year and a half. Um, it's, it's been really cool. That's an interesting point. I mean, I, I have noticed uh, on Twitter that when when the Microsoft people take their, you know, required, right, they, they're given a yeah. certain number of days and they're saying, I'm going to take that time. And I, I also thought it was interesting that um, the government has done something similar. There's a lot of good relief for COVID purposes, whether it's because you have child care issues yeah. or whether it's because you're 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 sick or you're, have, you're, you're doing vaccine and the vaccine, you get a little sick from the vaccine sometimes. So um, I, I've been pretty impressed overall with organizations and the government included um, uh, in some of the flexibilities that have been, have been put in place that that didn't exist before. Yeah. That's really nice to see. I mean, I think for a while we didn't know if Microsoft was going to be the only one. They were so public right. about all the stuff they were doing um, and they were early in doing yeah, it. Sure. But I think it's really nice. It's really nice to see that happening even in the public sector. Um, but That's yeah, awesome. It's been a crazy time. So um what's what sessions are up for build? Do you have that? If you don't have that handy, I have it handy. Yes. Not... <laughs> <laughs> um I do. I mean, and I, I'll share I can share the the blog too, which is which will take you to the tech community where you should all join anyway. Um but let me grab that. Um but I got yeah, it for you. so it's in oh, there. Oh perfect. Look at you, you're perfect. Um, yeah, so if you click there, you can see all five, but I think I know them off the top of my head. Um, we have a, a really, a really cool story, two really cool stories of just like, think like one, so one is a bunch of MVPs from the Dominican Republic who came together and started the very first Microsoft developer community in Haiti. Um, so two, I think there were a group of like five or six of them, but two of them are gonna be speaking on that. Um, which I'm really excited to hear about. And and then there's a group of MVPs and non-MVPs um, in West Africa and doing similar things, just like grassroots tech communities and, and building them. Um, we have um, what, one of my peers, actually uh, one of my coworkers who is a part of a hackathon team, they built something called the baby bot for teams it's an internal tool but it's basically to help women with like preparing for maternity leave being on maternity leave and then transitioning back to the office and um and they're now building a very similar bot for our internal diversity and inclusion team so it's a lot about just like the bot technology and teams and how you can use it to kind of solve for human resources um issues um God, I'm gonna get these all, come on. Oh, Chris Gill, another like part of Humans of IT since the beginning, was not an MVP when he first started helping out with Humans of IT and is now. Um, and he's talking about taking the anguish out of languishing. So he's a big leader in, in our kind of like mental health work in Humans of IT. And so he'll be talking about that. Um, I'm gonna get it. What's the fifth one? Oh, uh, I, it's a give camp, which is a Microsoft employee and a non-Microsoft employee who um, basically built a, a, a nonprofit to give code for free to uh, companies and people who need it. Awesome. I got them all. Uh, yeah, I'm really a, I'm excited a, Yeah, about you got it, all five, <laughs> five for five. Well, I'm a big proponent of the humans of IT tracks. And so if even if you're not a developer and there's nothing else that builds that's of interest to you, it's a free conference anyway. <laughs> sign up and listen to these really great sessions uh, that just talk about how people are using their talents for, for you know, broadening technology to more people and or, or implementing technology that helps people in unique ways. I think that's, a, those are great stories. Yeah, they're all amazing stories. And it's, it's funny because I, I don't, I haven't had the attendee experience really virtually, but I remember um, from going to Ignite and going to a bunch of the tour stops and I kind of split my time between humans of IT and like whatever MVPs were speaking on Microsoft 365, like those technical sessions. And it it's just, a, it's a really nice physical break to be in a room that isn't 
totally focused on tech isn't really marketing anything to you and you're just it, there's just like a different energy in that room right everyone's really chatty afterwards and like connecting and sharing LinkedIn QR codes and it's just like a it's a different vibe and so it's a really nice break if you are kind of watching the really deep technical stuff all day um so hopefully it serves the same purpose online like you almost feel like you're in a different room in the building but yes if you go to a, if you go to one of <laughs> Dux's sessions which I, I know he doesn't have one to build but when he does them in purpose he in person he usually makes everybody get up and dance with him so you know, <laughs> it's a nice uh, middle of the day uh <laughs> stretch if nothing else totally totally <laughs> All right. I don't see any additional questions. Anybody? I just want to make sure since we have Allie's time here. Otherwise, yeah. I might ask you a different question completely, Allie. Anytime. <laughs> Non-related to humans of IT. I believe you have something to do with the MVP program, don't you? I do. <laughs> so we're all in government, so we don't really get to lever to know much about the program is there just like the, the five minute intro to what mvp is about since so, so my understanding is because because we're in yeah. government we can't be mvps because there's certain benefits you would get from the company and that's considered compensation or whatever yeah in fact i could just share we literally i just did a presentation on this um with lori potmeyer so this is going to be teams focused but i could i have all my overview slides in here so i can talk about it i mean so to to be clear, I'm not on like the program, the MVP award program team. My job is much more um, engaging the MVP community for and with the product groups, right? So giving oh. the MVPs the early information, the, um, you know, the connection with the product teams and then giving the product teams sort of that MVP like expert feedback and um, amplification the third party scenarios all that stuff and so it's um it's a really fun part of the job but a lot of i i do get a lot of the um complaints <laughs> about the program side that i really don't have control over so like if it were up to me we would let all the government employees in oh, like, no, no. you won't get, you won't 100%. get complaints from us a hundred percent i wish that i could do something about that but i won't be able to um <laughs> but but basically, so these are always like the six things that, that we talk about. Um, what is an MVP? So the MVPs are are these people who do not work for Microsoft, who have deep knowledge about our products, who are really passionate about sharing that knowledge, who are on the bleeding edge, want to test all the new things, always future looking, um, who love to provide feedback, sometimes very critical, but really helpful, constructive feedback um who want to solve real world problems with our technologies and then the community spirit is something we talk a lot about just because um you can be really really amazing at excel but like if you have a bad attitude like it's gonna be just painful <laughs> to have you in the community and so i think just like the community spirit and um this is where we usually give the spiel of like if you want to be an MVP just to be an MVP to get an award, then like you're in the wrong place, right? Like the we talk about how to be how to become an MVP. There's no formula, right? But if you're trying really hard to become one, you probably won't, <laughs> if that makes sense. That does make sense, yeah. Um, and so this is this is Lori's slide of just like some of the things you can do. Um to become an MVP. It's like sharing your code on, on GitHub, contributing to the Microsoft tech community. For, for teams, for humans of IT, and for a few other product areas, there we're always looking for guest bloggers, and you don't have to be an MVP to do that. And so if you're producing content um, for us on tech community, like that is a positive, that is something that is positive, right? You don't get paid to do that. So um, that counts as a contribution towards becoming an MVP. Um, and then it just depends on like kind of who you are, what you like to do, how to videos, podcasts, if you're more of a writer and you have your own blog, if you want to host user groups and plan events, um, and, and then just amplifying kind of like the, the, the product truth, like amplifying blogs on tech community, for example, are usually the newest, most up to date um features and everything like it is what the product teams want our customers to know um and so those are the things you should be retweeting right um 
recapping events for people who weren't there. Um, those are just like some ideas for people who want to get involved. Um, and then we always talk about Ikigai, which is something that Tracy Vandership always talks about. Which, um, for anyone who knows her, she's one of our MVPs in South Africa. And um, it's it's just like sort of, it sort of represents that community spirit, right? That intersection of something that you love, something that the world needs, something that you could be paid for um, and something that you're good at. And so like, it's sort of like your purpose. Um, and even though you can't get paid for contributions to the MVP community, <laughs> usually you're getting paid for work that's related to it. Right. Um, and then we kind of go through the process, which this is the part that everyone is like, what? That's how it works? Like, I don't know if we're not supposed to share it, but no one shared it until like a year ago. And so we <laughs> we just talk about it because why not? It's um, It's a review process similar to like any job interview, right? Um, but we find you first usually, right? So you show your passion. It doesn't have to be for teams. It can be really for any product. Um, you have to be nominated by a current employee or a current MVP. Um, and then once you're nominated, you submit a form where you kind of put in all your contributions. Like, oh, I wrote this blog. It had this many impressions, et cetera. Um, including the data is really helpful. And then it gets reviewed first by a regional lead um and then if you make it through them then you would mm -hmm. come to me and my team who would look through and um decide if like this person meets the bar if they need more coaching um those types of things usually the hardest part is trying to figure out the paid versus unpaid piece that's usually the toughest um and then if if everyone thinks you're amazing <laughs> Da -da -da. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting because I've I've met a lot of MVPs just com just participating in the community, right? So yeah. because there are a lot of MVPs who participate in community in general because it's their personality to start with, right? That's how they became an MVP to begin with because they were so open with their things. Um, so I was just I, I always like to throw that out there, and since I knew you had some involvement <laughs> in the program, yeah. that um that it's just interesting to hear about because uh, they are the ones creating some great content for us. Yeah. That we should take advantage of it. They are, I mean, they are amazing. It's like I I always kind of joke, but it's not really a joke that they know more about our products than we do. Like they <laughs> often say things and where I, it's almost embarrassing sometimes the conversations where you have like a whole engineering team and an MVP ask a question, they're like, huh, I don't know. And you're like, why do they know more than you? <laughs> um <laughs> it but, happens. <laughs> yeah. No, but I think it's like it's 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 amazing and it has been it's interesting because i think i was saying earlier like i was a teacher before and when i went to business school i thought for sure i'd end up in like ed tech or like education consulting something where i could still kind of have my hands in, in in ed and um i just kind of landed on this internship my internship was literally like modernize the mvp program like find the pain points fix it, whatever. Um, easier said than done. I have a really beautiful deck, <laughs> but I don't think anyone took my advice. Um, and and the t and I have this awesome manager and this awesome team. And so I was never really trying to leave, but I, I always thought, well, I can always like move to an accessibility team or a philanthropy team or education team. But working with the MVPs, I mean, it's like, it really is sort of like filling that um that need it's like I, I feel like I have that impact right and I'm mm. surrounded all the time by these amazing people who are just giving free <laughs> advice <laughs> and education and resources free marketing for us I mean they're really incredible and it's um a lot more relevant to to a career in education than <laughs> than I <laughs> previously thought <laughs> That's true. Well, Ali, I know we're we're getting uh, there on the time, and so I just wanted to to uh, say thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I, you know, I, I really wanted to share the Humans of IT uh, community with this group of people and with everybody who participates in the in our user group. And so, thank you so much for for agreeing to come on. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. <laughs>